In the last video, we talked in abstract about what uh, the OU supercomputer is and how do we use it. And in particular, we talked about using Slurm. And the next set of videos, we're actually going to go through the process of setting up a, an ex experiment, in, a deep learning experiment, and then actually uh, scheduling those jobs on the supercomputer. So first off, we have to talk about access to the supercomputer. Um, I happen to be working from a Linux laptop. Uh, if you have an, uh, an OS 10 laptop, so Macintosh, uh, you'll have access also to a shell program that you can use. In Windows, you have lots of different kinds of options for shell programs. You'll have to pick one that works best for you. So here within this local shell, uh, I can SSH to Schooner. So SSH stands for S Secure Shell. So this is an encrypted connection. Uh, schooner.oscar.ou.edu uh, is the, it's a virtual host name, it actually is a host that doesn't really exist. Uh, it's going to automatically route us to one of Schooner 1, Schooner 2, or Schooner 3. If your username on Schooner is different than your local username, you'll also have to specify your remote username. So that's what the dash L uh, option is here. And what happens next uh, is going to vary depending upon what your environment looks like. In my case, I already have SSH keys uh, set up, so I'm having to provide a, a local password. But uh, uh, for those of you who are just starting out, you're, you're probably going to be prompted for a, uh, a password on Schooner. So you'll use that password. OK, so now you can see I'm actually connected to Schooner 1. and uh, Within the shell, let's actually talk about a few uh, Unix level commands before we move on to actually working with our files. Uh, so uh, the, your home directory, so PWD stands for print working directory. Uh, when you first log in, you're going to be dropped into your uh, home directory. Uh, for those coming from the Windows world, this is a folder. Uh, so, so mine is slash home slash fag. Uh, and uh, it has some uh, contents, uh, some of which you're all welcome to, to make use of. Other, others are, uh, are protected. But, um, uh, but what you can see within this uh, directory listing is a whole set of most of, most of these are also uh, directories. Um, there are a few files here, so conda.sh. Uh, the error.log, et cetera, tfsetup.sh, those are all files. The things in blue are, are all uh, directories. Um, the ls command stands for list. You can also give a dash l option to get more detail about what each of the files or directories uh, are. So conda.sh, um, you can see that it's it's owned by me. This is the group that's associated with it, et cetera. Um, th this talks about who has access to what. So uh, so if you're curious about that, then uh, then uh, what you want to do is look up uh, access permissions and files for, in the Unix world. All right, so let's let's go ahead and uh, let's see. Let's go into um, uh, one of our other directories here. So Python environment here. So CD stands for change directory. What you'll, uh, once that happens, you can see that, uh, that the directory has changed from tilde, which is resolves to your own home directory to Python environment. If I say PWD, you can see that it now uh, changes to home uh, fag uh, Python environment. And now within this, there are lots of, uh, or in this case, there's one other directory. Uh, we can also CD into that. And by the way, uh, the bash shell does support tab completion. So if you type a couple of characters and then tab, it will try to fill in uh, the remaining information. So that's why some of this is appearing so fast. So within uh, home fag Python environment TensorFlow, you can see that there are a variety of different uh, uh, things. Most of those are directories as well. I can also uh, uh, cd to dot dot. Dot dot is a, uh, a special mean, name that means 
uh, the parent directory. So if I cd to there, you can see that now I'm in home vag python env. Uh, if I cd dot dot again, I'm now back into home vag. All right, next up, what we're going to do is go ahead and clone the uh, GitHub repository where uh, the files that we need uh, exist for this set of videos. So let's go ahead and do that. And there is also a link to this repository from the YouTube playlist. Deep learning practice. All right, you shouldn't need any special permissions to do that. Um, what has happened now is that uh, we have cloned the deep learning practice repository into a directory called deep learning practice. And, and we've, by, since we did the clone from within the, uh, my home directory, the, we, we've created this deep learning practice, uh, directory within my home. Uh, this has a few contents in it right now. What we care about are what's in the skeletons. Uh, module module one, you've already uh, probably uh, addressed at this point. So we're going to focus on module two. Oops. Sorry, an extra quote there. Okay, so we are now sitting in deep learning practice skeletons module two supercomputer. And that has within it uh, a Python file, which we will set up to be executable. Uh, and then a couple of uh, bash files, and we'll talk about those uh, here in a bit. So within this, um, this XOR base Python file, uh, there is a, a command in bash called cat that you can use to look at the entire contents. Unfortunately, that file is really big. Uh, so it's actually nice to be able to look at it one piece at a time. So there's a program called more that uh, that will just show you the first page. And then if you hit enter, you can go one step at, at a time through this file or space will take you one page at a time. There is also a program called less. And the thing to remember is less is more than more, um, but it has a lot of the same uh, capabilities as more plus other things. Uh, if you're in the middle of the file and you hit Q, you'll be back to the, the shell. Okay, so sometimes it's it's all it's helpful to be able to copy files, and in Unix it is the cp command. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, and copy that over to xor.py just just for fun. Uh, and now you can see if we look at the contents of our directories, there are two files here, um, both both Python files that have the same size as number of bytes in the file. If we actually ask if they're different. Um, you'll see that there is no uh, difference. If you want to delete a file, uh, rm is the way to delete. You can see xor.py is now uh, gone. We're going to need a directory here within this particular module called results. So I'm going to go ahead and create that. So make mkdir means make directory. And now you'll see that there is a results directory within uh, this, this uh, uh, module two directory. Another couple of commands that are useful uh, are called pushd and popd. Uh, so pushd acts a lot like uh, cd, except it remembers where, your direct, where you were beforehand. So uh, by doing a push D to tilde, that means go back to my home directory. If I say push D again, it takes me back to where I just was. So this, this is really, this makes it really easy to pop back and forth between directories. And, and in fact, there's a whole stack here that you can uh, make use of. Uh, so you can push to, to remember. Uh, and if you want to go back to your previous directory without remembering the, the current one, then it's a pop D command. Okay, so that that uh, 
gives you a, a little taste of how to work at the command line. And next up, we're going to work on editing our Python file.